Hey guys, so I was out here in the shop tonight, and a buddy of mine had asked me yesterday about making an arrowhead-shaped plaque for, like, deer mounts, for European mounts and so forth. And uh, there, there used to be a guy around in our area that made them by hand, and uh, they liked them. A lot of people were getting animals, uh, like, mounts put on them and stuff, and it was pretty neat. So he asked me, he's like, is that something that you could do with your new machine? <laughs> and I told him, I'm not sure. Uh, as you guys know, I am well off in the rabbit hole that is cnc but i'm learning and some of the stuff i'm having to use tools that i already know how to use to try to get to the end result that i want and currently i'm running uh for my cnc i'm just running my regular vectric uh desktop vcarve software uh so as long as i'm within the what is it 525 by 525 i'm good but i haven't pulled the trigger yet to get vcarve pro so a lot of the 3d design and stuff like that i'm doing in fusion 360 and you know I, I use that a lot for my 3d printers and such so i decided tonight to make a prototype of what he showed me a picture of and guys that's what i came up with uh it's a little wooden arrowhead that actually has the the edges kind of look like it was uh you know actually a chopped arrowhead uh, and I wanted to come up with the, the quickest, most efficient way of making this file. Now, this is a miniature version because I didn't want to spend three hours until I seen what uh, it looked like. So, you know, the final product later could be much, much bigger than this. But this is just a little prototype just to see how the lines came out. And I'm going to kind of quickly walk you through the process of how I went about making it uh, using assorted software. So uh, it's kind of an adventure. Some of you guys are pros at this and are going to make fun of me, but that's okay. I'm learning and I'm making some pretty cool stuff. So there you have it. All right, all you pros, uh, like I said, I know there's probably better ways, but I'm using what I know. So I went out to the internet, found me a little arrowhead outline to start with. Brought that thing in the light burn and traced it out in light burn and just oriented it and got it, you know, to where it's pointing up because that's the way I felt like it needed to be. Exported that guy over to an SVG format so that I could bring it into Fusion 360. Uh, there are ways of bringing images in, but I know this works. And so therefore, this is the technique that I used. So don't be hating. Uh, going over to Fusion 360, basically, I'm just going to import that SVG file that I just exported to my downloads folder and bring it into the workspace. It's going to, of course, not put it where I want it. So I'm just going to grab the little brackets right there and orient it to where 0, 0 is basically in the bottom left corner of it, just out of habit. <clears throat> then I'm just basically just going to tell it to leave that there. All right, the next step is I've got to figure out how I'm going to put the little, you know, marks on it to where it looks as if it is actually an engraved arrowhead. Uh, the way I come up with is that basically I'm going to extrude this thing up like a quarter of a millimeter. Then I'm going to make a duplicate of it. I'm going to raise it up above it. And once I get this one up above there, guys, the, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to come up with a way of getting those little ridges along the edge where it looks like it's been chipped away. Uh, much the way that they used to make the arrowheads. So now that I've got that one resized, I'm just trying to get these things kind of, I want them more or less centered. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because I don't want this thing to be completely perfect. It needs to be a little flawed because it's, it is, after all, supposed to be a handmade uh, arrowhead. So I'm just going to try to get this thing lined up the best that I can, and uh, that way you'll, you'll see what I'm about to do here. Uh, once I get that done, now the trick is to get that slope going from the top piece to the bottom piece that I want to give me that look. And the way I'm going to be doing that is I'm going to be coming over here and uh, basically taking those two shapes, using the top one and the bottom one, and just kind of attaching them. And when I do that, it's, it's going to create a mass between those two layers, which is going to result in the little lines that I was wanting, hopefully. And it, and it did. It worked. So... Once, once I realized that, oh my gosh, that actually worked the way I wanted it to, uh, now I decided to uh, go ahead and give it a little color and uh, make it actually look like wood so I could get a little bit better feel of how it was going to look at the end result. So I just dropped some brown mahogany uh, color into the, into the model and just checked it out 
and just kind of got a feel of, of how it was going to look. And guys, I was impressed with it. So exported the STL, brought it over into VCarve. Yes, guys, this is the third software that I'm using on this project. And basically what I'm doing is just setting up the, uh, the, the tool lines and everything for it. All right, it takes me a few minutes to get it laid out. I'm trying to eliminate any kind of edges or whatever. Of course, I've got the, uh, the downtown Jenny is going to be doing the cutout, and then I've got the uh, skinny Jenny coming back to do the 3D relief along the edge. Uh, that's the roughing pass that you saw there. And then I'm coming back with the skinny Jenny, and I'm going to do the uh, detail pass. And so according to VCarve, guys, I may have gotten it right. And uh, so now all that is left to do is export that file over to the machine that operates my Shapoco. And because I'm not using the bit setter because I have the uh, advanced uh, dust shoe and I tend to cause crashes, I'm just going to do what I'm used to doing with my other machines. And I'm going to export the roughing pass. Uh, and then it's going to incorporate a tool change and do the uh, secondary pass uh, for the finish and just do it two separate files keep it simple uh, re-zero in between files so sending that over to the cnc and letting it do the work all right guys so i hope that was interesting amusing or entertaining for you uh like i said i'm trying to work in a little time to spend with the cnc and the software and try to come up with projects and i actually think this is pretty awesome uh, you could paint these. You could in, you could you could engrave upon them. You could do. I could put these in lasers. I can make bigger ones for like endless endless things. And yes, there probably is an easier way. Some of you guys may have been yelling at me in the screen saying, "Do it this way, do it that way." But guys, I'm learning. I'm getting better. The object here is to continue to learn and enjoy the machine. Uh, and then to be able to make stuff like this makes it much much more enjoyable. So. If you're interested in any of the stuff in the video, guys, I will be putting links down below for the Shape of Co. I'll put a link in there for the Genie Bits, uh, Fusion, all the whole nine yards. There'll be links down below if you want to check those out. Because if I, the one link that I don't put down there, somebody's going to ask for. So, uh, like I said, just this is the kind of stuff that goes on here during the week when I haven't got a lot of jobs backed up. So I thought I'd share it with you. So if you like this kind of content, hit the button down below. And uh, maybe we'll see you in the next video. So until next time, be safe and have a good day.